Do you want to speak like a Dowie? <laughs> well, you may have come to the right video because my name is Ersic Hydra and I love playing dwarfs in roleplay games. Now, I don't have the perfect accent, but I think I've got it fairly good. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to come away from this being able to sound a little bit more like a dwarf. That is to say, you're going to be sporting a little bit of a dwarven slash Yorkshire accent because that's where it's from. It's not Scottish and it's not Geordie. Sometimes it slips and we'll cover that if and when I do a few slips. So let's get the show on the road and get started with the what I think is probably the easiest, especially for some of the um, sort of Englishmen already, or English ladies for that matter. So firstly, we take the letter H and we chop it off of any word. And thus, the word hatchet became hatchet, the word have became of, and the word hit became it. So few examples in terms of a full sentence. Pass me that hatchet, Ongi. I reckon I can have it down in about three hits. As well as that, we have, have we got time for a drink? No. Which leads us very neatly onto the next, which is the or. As one can tell, within the Dwarven dialect, there is no O. It is only or. It sounds more like a sort of or, O-R sort of resonance and tends to drag on a little bit. So let's go through a few examples. Instead of only, we have only. Instead of show, we have shore, and instead of stone, we have stone. So, putting these all into sentences again, a tiger thagaraki, if only Okri could see me, and oi wizard, show yourself your wazak, and one stone in front of the other, is that so hard? Look at this mess! Pretty easy to do, try and have a go yourself, let's move on to the next. Next, we move on to the ah sound within the English language and that disappears and it is exchanged with more of an o oh sound so instead of none it's non so it's more of a o oh. uh, o r kind of without much emphasis on the r so instead of none non instead of up up instead of lunch lunch few examples again in a sentence will none of you brave my steel and either pull me up or funnel ale down me gob again I think the scrim was ain't me up for lunch. Very tempting to go lunch. If you go with the upward inflection there, you will sound a bit like a Geordie. Very, very tempting to do with a dwarf. Lunch. Eel. The moment your voice starts sort of leaping up the back of your nose, starts trying to escape up that way, that's when you know you're in danger of going a little bit Geordie. There's nothing wrong with that, but of course, it's not true Dowie. And it's not true Yorkshire either. So, let's move on to the next. Now we come to... R, which changes to A. And this is one of the easier ones that many people within the UK will be pretty familiar with, that anyone either far enough north or south of the M25, which is sort of the ring road around London, uh, will say bath, path, etc. instead of bath and path. R just simply does not exist, and A instead. So, few examples, nice and simple. Uh, instead of craftsmanship, we have craftsmanship or craftsmanship. Instead of something like path, as said before, we have path. So, bunch of umgak timber and shot at craftsmanship's what this is. And, this path was a good idea, even if I do say so myself. Next, we move on to A, which changes to more of an E. So, as an example, play would turn into play. A, e, instead of A, A. E. So, sort of E-H. Um, again, instead of play, play. Instead of grey, Grey. So, racky, 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 come out to play. And, Grace here, good. I was bored of killing the brown and black ones. That was regarding rat's fur, by the way. Next, and we're nearly there, we move on to the letter T. Now, unlike H, we don't ignore it all the time when it's beginning a word. Now we ignore it when it's in the middle of a word. So any T's you find in the middle of the word that aren't essential for understanding what the word is will pretty much disappear. As an example, Mountain would turn into mountain. Now, you can pronounce them if you're somewhat of a posh dwarf, but it's, again, something I would perhaps leave out. Mountain. And again, plenty could turn to plenty. So, still plenty of room for ale. Did we find any yet? Finally, we're going to go with the little reminder that you need to use words ending in E, because E changes to I instead. Um, this would be, instead of sticky, you have sticky. 
But more importantly, most dwarven words end in I anyway, and this is basically to help it reflect the, the Yorkshire accent even more easily. Ungi, Thagaraki, uh, Thagazaki, Kazaraki, Ratogri. All sorts of is at the end, and now you know why. Finally, here's a sentence for you guys to try. I'll let you have a go yourself. Please pause the video. Please pause the video. I'll mark you out of ten. Have some brownie points or something anyway. Right, and finally, we're going to be going through a sentence for you guys to try. I'd like you to pause it for 10 seconds. Try this a couple of times, see how well you can do, give it a go, and then we'll go through it together. So, here we have, oh, a little agility is needed, I can jump like a mountain hare. So, let's try that again. Oh, a little agility is needed, I can jump like a mountain hare. Now, you guys try it, 10 seconds, and then we'll go through. So, ready? Let's go. So, let's go with the easy stuff first. O is O, we remember that, O is O, so O, a little agility, a little agility. You could put T's in there if you want your dwarf to sound a little bit more authoritative, Titititative. anyway. Or, a little agility is needed, or, or, a little agility is needed, depending on how sort of uh, gruff, rough and ready you want to come across. Then, I can jump, I can jump. So the only word that really changes there is jump to jump. And finally, like a mountain hare. Can either be like a mountain hare or like a mountain hare. Depending again on how you want your character to come across. So the optional letters of H's and T's generally useful for considering how you want your dwarf to be a bit more gruff or a bit more articulated. There is no harm in a dwarf being a little bit articulate, but some of the other vowel changes absolutely essential. Now, in the meantime, guys, it's one week to go exactly today until the next Warhammer Fantasy session, so feel free to like and subscribe, keep a track of that, and we will be continuing off in Altsdorf, and a week following that, so two weeks today from this video, we are going to be running through a how to talk like an orc. That's right, time to fix your gubbins! Orcs, probably second favourite. Love them. Guys, have yourself a great day. Hope you've enjoyed the really weird video, but hey, thought it might be a little bit of fun. And uh, yeah, see you around. Take care.